on the line, I was absolutely terrified. And a lot of that came from my fear of not being enough, not being yeah. perfect, not winning. Well, as Spider-Man once said, with great power comes great responsibility. Likewise, to be the person to beat couldn't have been easy. Yes, Sidney McLaughlin Lavrone may be considered today's one of the greats, but the pressure that comes alongside that title may just be too great as well. Fighting tooth and nail to be the best would do that. Just imagine the amount of time athletes spend in training, and then there are the almost inevitable injuries that come along the way. This, of course, paid off for Sydney, as she remains to be the fastest 400-meter hurdler, with a PB of 50.37 set in Paris 2024. Her time is also both a world record and an Olympic record. To say that Sydney had a successful season would be an understatement. Case in point, McLaughlin Lavrone set the 400-meter hurdles world record twice this summer. Yep, twice. That's just for her specialty event. She was also the fourth fastest woman in the world over the 400 meter and the eighth fastest over 200 meter. That's not the end of it. She also ran the third fastest relay split ever on route to Olympic gold in the 4 by 400 meter. Arguably, Sydney appears to be untouchable every time she steps on the track. Her journey to the top had not been easy though, like many others. It would be easy to assume that making it to the Olympics as a high school student it's, would make you a celebrity. While that was true for Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone after returning from Rio 2016, her senior year in high school became a difficult landscape. While the year had started off with the exciting prospect of improving her craft, high school drama dampened her hopes. She shared this and more in her book Far Beyond Gold, Running from Fear to Faith. She regaled that besides having a silent expectation to do even better, she felt left out by her peers. People were looking at me a certain way, Sydney wrote. It was as if participating in the Olympics had raised the bar for everything in life. However, it wasn't until a month into her senior year that the Olympic gold medalist realized her peers' perceptions had changed. The fact that she had reached the grandest stage at such a young age didn't sit well with many. Really though, this doesn't come as a surprise. Whether it be a teen or an adult, jealousy is an ever-present variable in today's environment. Unfortunately for Sydney, the disdain soon turned into a silent form of bullying. During most practices, there was exclusion, whispering, jokes, and at times, rude comments, she further shared through her book. This treatment led her to take a drastic step before nationals. She became so frustrated with the adolescent pettiness that she finally snapped. So, when the school's track team coach asked her to join the shuttle hurdles relay team with her peers, she refused. Surprisingly, her refusal took the coach by surprise. Sydney was, after all, the track team's star athlete, especially in the hurdles. Sydney, it's a national title, her coach reminded her, struggling to believe her refusal. But Sydney stood her ground. I sat out the race, forfeiting a national title for myself and the other girls," she recalled. Sadly, it wasn't just the bullying that led to such a drastic reaction. In addition to the unfair treatment she received from her peers that pushed her over the edge, there was another underlying issue. Long before making it to the Olympics, the 400-meter hurdles world record holder struggled with anxiety that came from the pressure to live up to expectations. Even after leaving high school behind, her struggles did not magically come to an end. She did not wallow, though. She took active measures to make sure that she would rise above. She turned to the most prolific and incredible coach the track and field realm had ever seen. The four-time Olympic gold medalist hired Bob Kersey as her special mentor. Yes, the same Bob Kersey, who coached legendary Florence Griffith Joyner. Simply put, meeting Bob had been a great move. Not only did the coach help her with the physical aspect of training, but mentally as well. When Sydney pulled herself to the side of the track, sobbing at one point, Kersey noticed her. He came up to her and inquired about her well-being. Sensing her hesitation to open up, Kersey gifted her a wheel of emotion that helped McLaughlin Lavrone to understand what exactly was her state of mind. While Coach Joanna's strength and conditioning training did help, 
it was Kersey who transformed her into a champion. Needless to say, Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone did not look back once she came under Coach Bobby's radar. Even then, life continued to flatten her down, or so it felt at the time. She didn't hide the fact that her mental health took a serious hit before the Tokyo Games. She reached her lowest point and even gave therapy a shot to help her through the rough patch. However, it didn't really go the way she hoped. Sydney decided to see a psychologist, but that turned out to be a letdown. She recalls no advice for outlook, which left her feeling frustrated. Instead of talking through her issues, she walked away with prescriptions for sleeping pills and antidepressants. Knowing that she needed deeper healing, she tried to cope by diving into social media. Sydney created a show called Saturday Night Vibes, where she connected with fans. But then, during one show, something disrespectful happened that bummed her vibe, and she decided to cancel it. While she missed having her mom around, she started going back to church, hoping to find some depth. That was when the Olympian turned to God, seeking genuine comfort amid her struggles. When asked by Today what advice she would give her younger self, McLaughlin Lavrone said, Your value is not placed in whether you win or lose this race. You were loved before and after. You're secure in Christ. You get to go do what you love and glorify God on that stage. She reiterated this in another show. After she found her rhythm, so to speak, everything fell into place. Sydney may not win all races, but she's finally okay with it. But just because she doesn't always win, which isn't a lot of time anyway, doesn't mean that people fail to recognize her brilliance. As a matter of fact, the University of Kentucky Athletics Hall of Fame class of 2024 welcomed six distinguished athletes a few days ago. Inductees include Olympic medalists Jasmine Camacho Quinn and Sydney McLaughlin Lavrone, alongside former standout players Jody Meeks, Corey Peters, and rifle champion Henrik Larson, as well as administrator John Kropp. Notably, the ceremony also faced questions regarding the selection criteria, as some critics argue about the diversity of sports represented and the potential oversight of other worthy athletes in different disciplines. However, the Hall aims to provide a comprehensive assessment of each candidate's impact on the university's athletics legacy. It's probably safe to say that Sydney's inclusion is not questionable. It means so much, McLaughlin Lavrone said of her Hall of Fame selection prior to the induction ceremony. Only coming here for a year, it was an amazing year. So being able to have an impact that warrants me even being where I am today, being inducted, it just means so much. And the UK family has always been so sweet and welcoming every single time and so supportive during things like the Olympics, so it's a huge honor to be here. A few days later, Sydney returned to her roots at Union Catholic High School in Scotch Plains, New Jersey, where she unveiled an Olympic banner honoring her impressive accomplishments. Watch this to see who else had impressive achievements this season.